G'day mate, and welcome back to, well welcome to Friday Facts 278, and I've got Mojo with me. Hello. So, we're going on with the new quick bar, it's finally here. Yes. Um, yeah, so, to refresh from ages ago, like a year, year and a half ago, we're bringing back a whole new quick bar. Um, currently the quick bar is like, it, it is an inventory, it is one or two slots, depending on whether you've done the research. Or whether you've got mods and have three or four slots worth of extra inventory space. Or well, you found the console command that can give you 20. Yeah, that too. Um, which is, what, add quick bar plus one or something? Or set quick something bar? Something like that. Yeah, it, 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 it's a basic command. Um, it'll basically change that into a shortcut bar. Which anybody who uses Mac or Windows is pretty familiar with the shortcut bar down the bottom. So... Yeah, that, that's basically the whole change. Um, it'll solve a few annoyances. No more random items appearing in the quick bar as you craft them, which, yeah, I don't look on the quick bar for stuff all the time that I've just crafted. Um, no more items moving down to different slots when they get depleted or recrafted. No more using the quick bar to carry things around. Uh, no more this will be crafted to inventory, or will this be crafted to the inventory or to the quick bar. Uh, no more confusion when shift-clicking item will it go to the quick bar or the trash slots or somewhere else which is actually a really big problem. Um, guides to the player to make popular shortcuts. P players are more likely to remember the shortcuts they created themselves, which is true. Uh, player is in full control of the quick bar instead of the game trying to be smart, which it doesn't do terribly well. And managing one inventory is much is simpler than managing two inventories and relevant item counts. So that's the probably the biggest thing. So as we can see from the pretty picture, We've got 646 yellow belt. Yep. That's, so it's that's actually, all you got. It's counting the whole amount you have in your inventory. Not just what you have in that one slot. Um, which would probably be the biggest thing. Because I know lots of times I go out and building stuff. And I start off with lots of belt. And then I get halfway through and I run out of belt. And I had no idea because the stack just ran out. If the stack disappears pretty fast. Yeah, well, if the stack starts at 600 and I can see it counting down, and when it gets to 200, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to stop for half a second and craft another 300, and I might get the whole lot crafted and use it. I might only get half it crafted before I end up running back to base and grabbing more myself. It, it, it at least preempts yeah, that. Yeah, knows what's going on. Yeah, it preempts that, that, oh shit, I'm out. Um, and to compensate, the main inventory is going to be 20 slots larger because you're going to lose 20 from the quick, quick bar. So, no loss. Take a penny, leave a penny, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So the other big change is rather than the quick bar being just two shortcut bars, it's actually now 10 pages, in air quotes, of shortcuts that you can figure as you like. And the idea is you can set up, you know, we can see from the picture that the bottom one's probably for base building. Same with number one and number two. Number three is definitely for building oil. Got to have your oil quick bar and then your train one. Trains and then outposting. And then I don't know why we've got solid fuel and modules mixed together. We just accept that. And then number nine is all about the blueprints. Yes. So when you click on the one or the two, you get a page selector, which shows all 10 pages of shortcuts. You can then easily select what pages you want to actively use and see on the main screen. The number of pages visible on the main screen is configurable. Now, neither of us are sure whether that means you can show five because you only want to see five or whether you can change the configuration to say show 20 because you're playing with Bob's mods. 20 is probably not enough for Bob's, is it? Well, Bob's has changes the quick bar to be like four or six normally. Yeah. What are you? I mean, if they get rid of that, what will the Bob's players be able to do now that they can actually see the screen and not be have it taken up by this huge quick bar? That's <laughs> very, very good question. Um, Getting straight to the important topics here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the page selector also acts as extended quick bar, allowing you to quickly grab an item or a blueprint you don't commonly use or allowing you to quickly configure your pages. So you could open it up and just grab train track out and not put it down to the bottom because you just need five bits of train track there and then. But then again, we just press Q on everything and that's it. Um, Pet tools kind of eliminated the need for a lot of things. It has, it has. Um, 
So one of the changes is the keyboard shortcuts. Keys one to zero will pick an item from the slots. So one through to 10 and then and shift. That should actually point out that's a change from so at the moment it's one, one to through five to five and, and then shift, and then shift one, one through to five. five to get through to six to ten yeah so that'll now be one through to ten which i guess a little bit more awkward but then again with it's the annoying because i find i've actually gotten used to one to five shift one to five now really because i was going yeah. with the pipette tool you just don't seem to need it anymore I used it surprisingly often. I found if you stack like, you know, you got the picture there, the red belt on one layer and then the yellow belt on the other. I found you put yellow belt on and then you put the red belt on slot six, which is shift one. You could then alternate between the type you're building by pressing shift. See, I, I have... So it's normally X to swap the order of belt one. You know, yeah. But slot one and slot two. So I normally have red, yellow on the first one and red on the second one. That's the other way of doing it. And if I need to swap, I press the X button, which then reverses the order, and then use what I want, and then swap it back. And Unless you as, wanted um, power poles or something, like medium power poles, which is on the first layer again, then you've got to swap back. So yeah, mm, I thought about it. Yeah, see, again, <laughs> pipette tool. Yeah, as I said, pipette tools eliminated the need for pretty much all of it anyway. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's like... I. Belt, belt, undergrounds, and splitters, one through to three. They're really the only ones I use. If I'm going to combat, yep. combat, I always have a, a set combat belt, you know, set combat toolbar, which will have grenades if I'm using them as the first slot or, or destroyer capsules or whatever I'm using primarily in the first slot and then something in the second, potentially something in the third. That's it. I, I don't normally need more than you know, one through to three. Um, with any sort of build I'm doing, because if I'm building it's perpetual, if, if I'm in combat, I generally only need two or three items. That's it. Yeah. Um, that's, also, that's actually also generally how I do it. I have the first row is the building row, and then the second row is the combat and miscellaneous. Yeah. So it is going to change the shortcut keys. I'd, I'd love to chat to a speedrunner, because I think it would impact them the most. Because I have likely. a feeling that they're probably going to use as many keyboard shortcuts as possible. The other interesting thing is, can you still put intermediates on the quick bar? That uh, would affect I, them the most. Like coal. Coal would coal, be actually yes. my question. Coal, gears, circuits, um, ammo. Because I know when I first start off, like if, if, if I'm on a multiplayer map and I'm put in charge of Burner City, that first slot is coal. Yeah. And... I can only see 50, so I assume I only have 50 or less at any time. Being able to see I have 600 at once would definitely be a big advantage. So I really hope that we can that we can handy. put whatever we want. I also really hope it saves between maps. Um, I bet it would. That'd be another big one. Um, so next part, we have the Ghost Cursor. A feature yes. for more advanced players is the Ghost Cursor. When selecting a buildable item from the Quick Bell, or whether you are using the Pipette tool, you'll have no. If you have, if you have no item of that type in your inventory, a ghost will be placed in the cursor instead. So, anyone who's watched me build extensively and seen me run out of inserters will see me open up a blueprint and find an inserter and copy one inserter as a blueprint and paste that thing down repeatedly. Funny enough, you don't have to do that in 17 anyway because of the copy-paste tools. Yeah, well, with the copy-paste tool, it, it was already going to be easier. Um, but if we can just, like, just press Q over an inserter and go, oh, you don't have one, but we'll give you a ghost one instead, that works for me too. Um, the catch is the feature will actually be off by default and can be turned on in the interface setting, settings. So there is going to be... When 17 comes out, I have a feeling the best place that players need to stop and look first is in the settings menu. And yeah, see what it's has probably changed. just overall worth looking through everything. Yeah. Um, lastly, we have integration with Blueprint Library. Still a work in progress since, uh, since big changes also come into the Blueprint Library. Players, you're able to create shortcuts for the blueprints from the Blueprint Library. This means you can place your most commonly used blueprints and books in one of the shortcut pages and then use them directly from the Blueprint Library without clogging up your main inventory. So that hopefully eliminates the case of 
I have Mojo's Rail Blueprints number three, but I've got one in my inventory, one in the game blueprints, and one in my own, you know, in my own personal blueprint library, and maybe even one on my toolbar. And Just a little bit of item duplication going on there. Yeah, and we're going to assume they're all the same and nobody's modified anything. You um, hope. You hope, yeah. Um, the blueprint library, the blueprint library is going to have its own separate Friday facts, and that's what I'm really waiting to see what they decided because there was a lot of feedback when it first came out. Um, for having a lot, of it, a lot of really fundamental things were ignored too. Yeah, um, like like being able to see names of what the blueprints are called, not just four little pictures. Um, yeah. Having things auto update because I know when I'm updating my blueprints. It's like I'm updating the current book, but then I need to delete the master copy out of my blueprint library and put the book in. And having the, the your personal library private instead of public, that way it doesn't sync the entire thing to the entire game. Little things like that. Yeah, little things like that. Like because I run standalone installs so often, I find I nine times I just don't have blueprints. Um, because I've always got to go and either go find a. a Go to Pastebin and copy my blueprints that I'm actually using and paste them in to Factorio because they haven't synced with the server to then come back to me. Or what has happened in the past is I've loaded up a local save that I was using a blueprint 20 minutes ago. I've now joined a multiplayer map. And for some reason, I need to download my own blueprints off my own local hard drive via the Factorio server. Oh, yeah, the blueprint herpes. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yep. You can actually. Um, sp you know, I don't think it's as, as possible as it used to be, but it, you used to be able to spread blueprints like crazy. I remember that once yeah. where I was like, how did that blueprint get there? And it was because. Um, and it was on a different install as well. It wasn't meant to have my blueprints in it, and somehow it got there. Yeah, it, it, it synced to the server and then came back, which I've got around by running different versions. Um, but then the catch is if I run a older version of Factorio, my whole blueprint library just gets wiped from the server. Oh yeah, just throws an error. Yeah. I was going to say, the other thing you can do, um, like if you run multiple installs, is you have one which has the blueprints, and then just copy the blueprint.dat file. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, That'd it's, be the easy way. It, it's another thing you've got to remember to do when you're setting up a new install. It's, it's something I should do, but I'm, I'm bad at it. Um, so then we have the non-GUI non progress update. So after the last Friday Facts, there was, well, last couple of Friday Facts, there was um, talks about the GUI and why they don't just release Factorio now and finish the GUI, GUI during the experimental phase. Um, and one of the clarifications that Cloen wants to make is it's not just the GUI that's not finished yet. The fluids aren't finished yet. Um, so they're still making efforts to fine tune the new behavior, specifically how throughput over distance and flow with different fluids works, because that'll be something new that we're all going to have to deal with at the moment. We just accept that all fluids run at the same speed through pipes with 17 steam will run faster and crude will run slower. So that's something new we're going to have to change and, and play with. Um, we've seen the new biters and the new worms, but we haven't seen any new high-res spitters, so they have still got to be done. And they're also experimenting with some functional changes to the enemies. Any thoughts, Magic? I wonder what that means. I don't know either. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, they've been tweaking the AI and such. I know they've been tweaking the AI, and, and we've seen some pictures and 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 some videos of, of the AI in motion in the Friday facts. Um, so uh, I'm looking forward to more what's coming, um, but functional changes is something that leaves me curious. Um, I don't know how functionally you could change the biters that much, but Maybe they're actually in introducing the Factorio Scorpion. That's the only thing I put it down Maybe. to. Um, Spidertron is an enemy. Spidertron is an enemy, yeah. <laughs> Make you feel like Australia. Um, so we've got further map generation tweaks. 
So, Fright FX 258, which was a long time ago, um, or at least feels like it, they updated the resource generation, and from reading the Fright FX at the time, it looked like they really, really improved things, and things were going to look a lot better. And then, was it Twinson last week? Commented on it with the wave defense, or was it Clone? Uh, I think it was Twinson. Somebody, what one of the devs commented on using it for the the wave defense. Um, but since that post, there've been some further planned changes and improvements, spe- specifically to the placements of tiles, biomes, trees, doodads, and cliffs. So, Hopefully, we won't get maps which are either all cliffs, just all the time, everywhere, or no cliffs. Like it'll be a little bit more dynamic than very binary, yeah. and you won't get swampy maps. Uh, yes, yeah, if you want maps water, are more on. annoying. And, and for those of that, that don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the maps that have like little puddles of water everywhere. Yeah, if you generate a map which has anything more than low. Was it low frequency? Low. Anything yeah. more more than water in starting area, if you go out far enough, it eventually just turns into this swampy mess, alternating rapidly between water and, and you, you get to that halfway point where it's it's either water or land and it's it's very either or um which leads to just little bits of water everywhere the the one step higher gives you really like a little bit of land and lots and lots of water which is actually probably just as frustrating to play on yeah um there's no there's just no large Bodies of water like version 12. Version 12 was where it was at. No, 14. 14. 14 had large, like large bodies of water. It actually, the, even that's not true because in one of the playthroughs I've done on 16 has had no water, no water, and then just lake that I could drop a whole mega base into. So they do happen. They're just few and far in between. Uh, um, so then, yeah, we go on. We've got playtesting, bug fixing, and design balancing. Uh, while some internal playtesting shows that most things are stable, we're yet to have uh, our typical office-wide week or fortnight of playtesting and tweaking. Inevitably, things that we need to solve will come up during this playtesting, so be unwise to release before it's complete. There is also over 50 unsorted bug, bug reports in our forums, which we'll need to sort through. How many of those are yours, Major? Uh, not many. Okay. Okay. Um, so looking over what needs to be done, it's clear that the release in G- it won't be in January. Mm, there goes that. Oh. Yeah. So no more January update. So it um, definitely is Feb 30 then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it could be the 29th. Yeah, the potential. Yeah. Uh, it sounds unlikely. Um, so when we're ready to release 17, uh, it's launch definitely won't be a surprise. We'll announce the exact date in the Friday Facts at least a week beforehand. So you've got plenty of time to tell your boss that you're going to suddenly come down ill on the day that 17 gets dropped and have a week off work. Um, and, and go to the shops and stock up on everything first because you're probably going to forget to sleep for a couple of days. Um, but either way, it won't be during January. And, yeah. I don't know. What do you reckon, Mojo? February or March? Uh, February. I don't think they want to push it back too much. Like, that, it's already... I think they were already trying to get it out last. And now they're really pushing for January. Because everything... That's why I was saying, like, one or two weeks, like a week ago lie about now to next week because it really seemed like they were really trying they are really really pushing it. and and after you said it the other week um i thought about it afterwards and like you're right they are really like this is coming in 17 and this is coming in 17 and big news item and big news item um which are the sort of things you hold off to right before you're going to release to build up hype yeah and now we've sort of like we've, we've built up all the hype and we're like hang on whoa we're not actually ready 
Yeah, and they've made that mistake in the past too. I think with 15 where everything just kept building up and building up and building up and building up and then it just kept on saying, oh, it's not yet, not yet, not yet. And but it then dragged they, all the way out. To they, they released it like without any warning. No, hang on. 15 that too, or, yeah. Or 15 or 16? 15. Yeah. 15, 15 was, was particularly bad because yeah. it was coming since like November. Ages. Ages and ages and ages, and then just suddenly, like, dumped. And then 16, 16 wasn't much better. It wasn't handled much better. It was... Um, yeah, apparently that was late, too, from what I understand. So, yeah. Um, um, so, we need an office manager over at Woob, and, and we probably... Project manager? Uh, we're, uh, we're office manager, project manager, either Oh, that, or. too. Um, and we probably need a head of marketing. Yeah. Or at least Didn't we the... cover this before as well. In fact, that was a previous one, wasn't it? it? Was talking about how they actually had like a systematic process of going through design documentation yeah. and specification. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, there, there just needs to be a a little bit better direction at at the management level. I think um, just to tweak things slightly. Yeah have, yeah, have the hype leading up to the to the release. Not hype, 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 and then, oh, yeah, sorry, being delayed. Well, I understand programming. I understand it gets delayed. Um, that is the joys of programming, especially when it comes to games or, or, or major updates like this. Um, and I I admit I, I, I'd be one of those people that would love to see it drop tomorrow and then keep adding the GUI as we go through the experimental releases. If it's not feasible, that's fine. Um, but yeah, I understand that all this stuff here all needs to be done first. Yeah. At the um, same time, they do have a higher quality standard, which did set them apart from the re from the rest they do, they of the do. pack as far as early access. They do. Look, I'm I'm playing Factorio. I don't know how many years into, into the development cycle, and I really, really love not only the game. But the Friday facts and the fact that the devs are like, this is what's coming. This is the input we're looking for. Um, and, and you can leave input on the forums, on Reddit, um, in Discord if you want. There's there's plenty of places where you can leave feedback and the, and the devs actually read it. Oh, yeah. Um, whereas we both play Oxygen Not Included and they don't listen to anybody. They do what they want. Uh, they listen to a few people on the forums, but they mostly listen to... The people that really don't matter. Yeah, yeah, um, and and it, it leads to like my current base oxygen you know, I've just about given up on because it, it was laggy. They were meant to far, vastly increase things and, and improve performance, and they haven't. And then what they did promise got pushed back to the next release, which is another six to eight, ten weeks away. And they have a very, very fast development cycle. It's six to eight weeks. Yeah. But they, um, admittedly, they did the quality of life one, which was meant to be bugs fixes. But And I think they've actually fallen into the same trap that Prison Architect fell into, where they were pushing out too many content updates too fast. Yeah. And it's, they're starting it's, to accumulate all kinds of junk. Uh, it's 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 a game full of bugs that is still full of bugs, you know, a year and a half afterwards. Um, I, I've just started playing the universe sim again. Same story. There's still bugs in there from the alpha and features that are missing that were promised and just they haven't been delivered. Woob, Woob does set themselves apart. They are a very, very different company. I love what they do. Um, I admit that they're... They don't have a dedicated marketing team, which we can see, and we do, they don't have a dedicated product, product, project manager, which again we can see, um, whereas the other two companies do. But yeah, it's. I think I prefer to be left with what we lacks, but what they make up for in gameplay and, and quality of game, rather than the other companies who have a great you know, PR team and a marketing team and a, and, a, and a project manager, but then ship out a crap game over and over and over. Or a game full of problems over and over and over. Um, just so. Anyway, thoroughly sidetracked again. Um, well anything and truly. Else, anything else you want to add? Nope, that's everything I needed to get off. Okay, alright. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Next week? Yeah, next week. Uh, should be in Friday Fun Facts next week. So hopefully. We're worried if there wasn't. Well, these come out Saturday for us. So yeah. Alright, 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.